Gibbs. Be sure to look for the region's tip next week at the Texas A&M and Ole Miss game to be SEC great. Jake Gibbs, test your skills at our football throw and pose with the SEC championship trophy courtesy of Regents, official bank of the SEC. That is a head scratcher, isn't it? Yeah. One Heisman trophy winner in school history. And as much success as this program has had. Give Drake a while. You keep feeding him the ball and he gets closer with the carries. He orients his way towards 51 himself. Well, Drake did have that 23-yard touchdown reception a moment ago. Charleston Fowler in it running back now. Incomplete. His first miss of the afternoon. He is now 12 out of 13, 137 with three touchdowns. Just amazing the accuracy of which he completes passes. Last week against Ole Miss, he was 78% for that game. I mean, that is doing it. And he is a 67% passer or completion percentage for his career at, o at, uh, at Alabama. Nice edge block there, and I'm going to just split two guys, run over two more, and pick up the first down. That's 6'1", 250 pounds coming at you. Came in with 14 carries, 57 yards on the season. Stay in the line as the tailback. Fake it to Jostin, go through the air. Pitch and catch. Kevin Norwood on the reception, that'll be... Just shy of the first down, give him nine. Brent McClendon, the senior corner out of Atlanta. One of the last couple of completions by McCarron. You, know, you can't question his arm strength. That, that pass right there, all the way across the field on an out route, is right on time and where the receiver can catch it. Then another one as he's rolling out, just so accurate with the football. Kenny Bell will make a move, and he does. Down to the 22-yard line. Arrington Jordan pushes him down. A gain of 19, and the numbers are just piling up for McCarron. Boy, nice. Just kind of shook Brent McClendon at the top right here. It's playmaker in space one-on-one, -on -one. and McClendon doesn't get a, a hand on him. It's another defender that comes from inside out, and I asked Doug Nussmeyer, you know, describe Kenny Bell, and he says he's a guy that can just really take the top off a of defense. Excellent speed receiver. Averaging almost 20 yards per catch in his career. The 21. Carrying the throw it again. Underneath one to Kevin Norwood. Have a pass interference on the back end. And down around the goal line, there's a flag down. When you talk about this Alabama receiving core, Andre, and there is no doubt this could be one of the best they've ever had here in terms of depth and talent. I mean, and we haven't even talked about Amari Cooper. That's exactly. That's I mean, my point. might we be the, the best of the bunch. Coming off a 68 reception season last year and 11 touchdowns. During the pass, before the pass is thrown, holding on the defense, number 39. That's 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Amari, nine catches on the year, on the field. And we, we talked to Coach Saban about it. And, you know, where is Amari? He's been a little banged up. But he says, you know, he's also got to get right at practice. Yeah. He had a, you know, at that position, this time of the year, they're going to be nagging injuries, leg injury, whatever it is. You got to play through it and f somehow fight through it. But he is a big target. 
and a guy that knows what to do with the football. There's so many weapons, as you mentioned, at that position of receiver as well as the backs they have. And the best in the country under center, and A.J. McCarron. First down from the 11-yard line. Fowler still in it running back. size and speed, and then he knows what to do with it, going north and south. Fowler again off the left side, falls forward, he'll be just shy of the goal line, but that should be good enough to set up a first and goal. Let's see where they end up spotting this football. It will be first down and goal from the one. Gerald Robinson got through early. And got him down low around the ankles. Kind of tripped him up. And a couple of other Georgia State defenders stop him from getting into the end zone. Trent Miles wants a timeout for his Panthers. 6.15 to go in the second quarter. Alabama looking to stretch this out to 35. Looking to throw. To Fowler. He makes the touchdown reception. Justin Fowler devotes the work. And Coach Saban and Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, rewarded him. What a weapon. Big guy that can run between the tackles. They can line him up at H back, full back. A lot of different places in this in this Alabama offense. And he still can make plays. Well, after is up and good. Busy day so far for Kate Foster. 6-11 to go in the second quarter, 35-0. A.J. McCarron is having an unbelievable afternoon. Andre, 15 out of 16 for 166. Only one incompletion. That one was close, but a touchdown pass to Christian Jones. He comes back to DeAndre White, scrambling around, making plays on the move. Hitting Kenyon Drake. He gets into the end zone for the third touchdown pass. And then here, number four. To Justin Fowler, nice touch pass. And what I like about that is he's thrown with, you know, all the ways that you ask a quarterback to do it. With touch, he's had to drill some shots, and, you know, on the move. The guy can, he can play, he can play. He plays the position, he understands it, and he takes care of the football. That's what I like, but stand on the right. No interceptions. The four touchdown passes without an interception kind of quarterback to quarterback talking and not something that he ordinarily does but we start talking about it. I said hey did you expect this much success at Alabama and he said not in my wildest dreams when I got here I was competing for this job and lo and behold a couple of years later he's a two-time national championship winning quarterback and you just see the cool and the calmness when I when I got to spend that time with him here at Alabama's new weight room it was just you know invaluable but well, you and I were here a couple of years ago doing the spring game and he was battling that for that job and you and I walked away from that spring game saying it in our from our vantage point, it was his job. I mean, he just looked like he was the guy in control, and boy, he took the reins, and it hasn't looked back. Yeah, he looked like he understood the system, and now you're three years from that, and, and uh, a guy that really controls, he's the face of this program. I mean, he had to bide his time, and some really good football players were here before him, but this is A.J. McCarron's team. 29-2 is a starter. Ronnie Bell looked like he's going up top. Just off the fingertips of Robert Davis, that true freshman wide receiver. 
but McCarron in the last drive, showing you all kinds of different throws, and he's also showing you how to coach him up. Yeah, that's a true freshman right there, the tight end, O.J. Howard. So he's telling him on the back shoulder throw. That's the one incompletion that he's had all day. Hey, I'm trying to explain to you exactly where I'm going to stop you with the football on your back shoulder. Just kind of giving him some, some advice on how to execute that play. You know, you take away that first game against Virginia Tech, which is hard to do. He actually played the game, but he was 10 of 23 in that game against Virginia Tech. Since then, he's completed passes at almost 80% this season. That's E.J. Rose steps up in the hole. That'll be a loss of three for Travis Evans and the Panthers. Yeah, he's a good one. You turn the film on in Mosley, you see 32 just flying around for this defense. Five tackles already in this game. Beats the block up front and then gets makes his way to the ball carrier, but boy, he does it. He plays with speed. He knows this defense. Can get him in and out of certain situations. Smart player, and he's just gifted athletically. His dad is shipyard supervisor down in Mobile. His mom is school teacher. Comes from a foundation where you don't brag a lot, you just go do it. Yep. He can go to do it. Get some help in the secondary. Landon Collins, the sophomore, coming up from that safety spot. I haven't talked a lot about Haha -ha Clinton Dix today and what his absence will mean. Coming off a career high 14 total tackles last week against Ole Miss, suspended this week. Guys like Landon Collins and Eddie Jackson, Geno Smith, going to have to play well until Haha -ha gets back to the lineup, if that's the case. Suspended indefinitely, uh, indefinitely for taking what's been reported as some uh, impermissible benefits from an assistant coach who has been put on administrative leave. Yeah, and he, you know, he's by nature a strong safety, having to move over and play free safety. He played that little screen pass just right. you got to split the blocks and then make the tackle when you get there. And that's exactly what Collins did. 426 to go in the second quarter. Alabama doing what number one teams do. And that is Put up points on the board. 35 nothing. And now Blake Sims will take over under center. The junior out of Gainesville, Georgia. Outstanding athlete. There's Drake. He gets to midfield and it's put up there. I just like how, how hard he runs. Blake is Blake Sims. The backup now a junior season. Didn't get any snaps last week, but the guy, when you watch him during warm-ups, and I knew he would get some time today, I wanted to take a good look at him. He's just, he throws the ball with confidence, and I think that's what you're going to see here while he's in the football game. He just throws it with confidence, knows where to go with the football. Watch here, a little quick, quick slant route out to Norwood, and boy, these guys, this receiving core, Dave, they know what to do with the football when they get it in their hands. Turn, stops, pursuit coming from inside, reverses field, gets back outside to give himself a chance to pick up additional yards. Exactly why he's one of our impact players. He's going to get some time today, and you watch the athletic ability of Kenyon Drake. That's full speed and a spin. That's video game type stuff. So Drake will head back to the sidelines. Already has a touchdown reception, and D. Hart to check in. The sophomore out of Orlando, Florida. We'll line up. Five foot nine, 185 pounds, dancing around, and there's a flag down the line of scrimmage as Hart was shy of the first down, or the goal line. Kai Dallas tripped him up. Fourth start on the offense, number eight, five yard penalty. Very nice first down. First down, number 58, number 58. Slid 64 <laughs> at right tackle, Grant Hill. A little 
bit early. Grant, another one of those true freshmen out of Huntsville, Alabama. Rated the number one offensive guard coming out of high school by ESPN Recruiting. Boy, yeah, this half there between Sims and D. Hart. And D loses a few yards, and now they're back outside the 10-yard line. Just going to give Blake Sims a little more room. There you go. For his first touchdown pass of the season. Actually, he's got one. His second touchdown pass of the season. These guys, Alphonse Taylor, is a guy that jumps the right guard. If they don't get it together, you'll see the other, the first team go back in. Try to give you an opportunity to get some snaps and quality and quality snaps in a game. And this is what he's talking about yeah. to us about we can't have these negative plays. Once again, they had 14 last week and they got to cut that out. He said he'd like to have none, but on average you might have two or three per game. Here's Pete Hawk, nice little step step. At the 15 of Kite Dallas, a true freshman of Lithonia, Georgia. No gain on the play. Well, Kite Dallas was a three-star prospect out of high school. Had 95 tackles his senior year, so he knows how to make his way to the football and then stay wrapped up right there, just fighting and holding on to D. Hart. Four tackles in the game so far for the true freshman, Kite Dallas. We were talking to the coaches a little bit about D. Hart yesterday and what his role is. Hadn't seen a whole lot of D. A couple of knee surgeries. Trying to fight his way back, but mainly just a third down guy. Yeah. Here is third down. That's him. Plenty of time to throw, but now flushed out of the pocket. The guy who played some running back back in 2011. Showing you some of that footwork, picks up six on the play, but that'll bring up a fourth down, and here comes the field goal unit, led by Cade Foster. They just couldn't get to the first down marker. You see the quickness, us. why he has that running back background. He turned that corner, he put lower the shoulder and, and hit the, the speed button, almost picked up the first, almost got to the first down marker. Up there, you got the very talented running back combination of Arkansas against the defense that has been on lockdown for the Florida Gators. But Florida having so many troubles, so many troubles trying to score that's, points. That's a big game for Arkansas. They're going to murder's row on their schedule, and if they can somehow hold on, and we'll see the Hogs next week against South Carolina. But uh, that's a big get if they're able to knock off the Florida Gators who playing without Jeff Driscoll in this one. There it is next week. You see upper right on your screen, South Carolina, Arkansas. That will be a very interesting matchup in Fayetteville. I think Brett Beal is the man to get Arkansas redirected. Loves that power football, big backs, big, big offensive line, solid defense. That's how that program is going to be built. Just 36 seconds to go before halftime. We'll kick it off. That'll save a couple of yards deep. And now Albert Wilson's got to bring it out. He's an explosive player. But Alabama, an opportunity to get their coverage team down. It's going to be a hard time. Not a bad return considering the, the head. 
hesitation and he had last time these two teams met had a 97 yard touchdown on a kick return didn't know if he wanted to bring it out all of a sudden you take the step out of the end zone you have to bring it out today's first and ten line brought to you by your local toyota dealers looks like georgia state will just take this from the locker room Usually a four receiver set. Sam Jefferson, the fullback on that carry, and Panthers. Looks like they might just head to the locker room here. 15 seconds to go. Great first half for A.J. McCarron. Crazy numbers. McCarron goes 15 of 16, 166, and four touchdowns. Outstanding catch by the Andrew White, the corner of the end zone. Highlights those receptions. The McCarran and Company, the number one team in America, looking at all of that with a 38 point first half. And for the Crimson Tide, they put up 308 yards of offense. They hold Georgia State to 41. Let's go down to Kara. Coach, offensive execution under A.J. McCarron, very solid. That second unit got in there, and I saw you coaching a lot. What was your message to that group? Well, we had two penalties, and we had the ball on the five-yard line, and you know, our quarterback doesn't have the cadence right, and the guy's got to play with points. So, you know, but this is a good time for him to get some experience and to learn. Overall, the expectation of seeing better translation of what you're practicing to the game, how have they improved today? Well, I think we did a lot better job of executing. I mean, obviously, you know, our players, you know, outmatched them a little bit, but it's really about us, and uh, I've been pleased with the way we've executed. We messed up a couple third downs on defense, but all in all, it was a pretty good half. Thanks, Coach. Dave? Thanks, Kara. Coach pleased with 38 points in the first half for a team that came in averaging 35 points a contest. He got 38. That's the number they averaged a year ago on their way to a national championship. Time for the C-SPAR halftime report. Dari, Kevin, guys. All right, thank you much. No problem for Alabama as expected. 38 nothing. McCarron, 15 of 16. If he doesn't play again, as we welcome you into the C Spire halftime report, if his day is done, that completion percentage of 94% would be a school record. A Georgia State, 41 yards of offense, 40 yards in penalties. Alabama, over 300 yards of offense. What do we think was going to happen? Well, between last <laughs> week, this week, and next weekend versus Kentucky, Alabama's doing pretty well. They're looking like they're having these tune-up games to kind of help themselves along in the season, and that's exactly kind of what this game is turning into as we see the, the uh, discrepancy in total yardage on either side. But Bama's executing, executing the way that they want to be executing. And, yeah. and when you know, Nick Saban says this all feeds into the whole BCS era that sh we're still in this year. Are we finished with A.J. McCarron today? And other should. Alabama starters probably should be. We will see. We, of course, won't know. Uh, until we get into quarter number three. Boy, some issues for Georgia State getting the right personnel on the field. I am see Trent Miles upset. There it is, having to take a timeout just to get the right personnel. Well, we'll take it with Coach Miles and the Panthers. Back in a moment. 15 yards. Rushed out of that pocket. And we will uh, pick up the yardage lost on the penalty. The pressure came from Xavier Dixon, senior out of Griffin, Georgia. Excuse me, a junior out of Griffin, Georgia. Yeah, I'll give it to him. <laughs> you know, waiting to see uh, a guy that came in with so much on his shoulders. The true freshman, Ruben Foster, the linebacker, that wears number nine for Alabama. Can't wait to see him. I mean, the coaches talk about him. Other players talk about just a hitting machine. Still learning the ropes, but this is the type of game where he can get some snaps. Under his belt, so it comes on a blitz, and Georgia State catches him on it. 
It's the pullback Jefferson. He'll have the first down over the 35 to the 37, 18 yards of that pickup. Well, what a nice block by Albert Wilson, the wide receiver out, out far left in the formation. Watch his block come down inside and just kind of clean things up and free up the free up the receiver right there. And that's the block that frees him up and allows him to pick up the first down. Sean Jefferson, the fullback. Now that's how you compete. And we talked about Wilson affecting this game. He's a playmaker. Hadn't really touched the ball, but still making his mark on the football game. Well, that was C.J. Mosley leaving the field. Looked like he got banged up. That's big news for the Crimson Tide and their fans. They're leader on this team. So play action here. Bell, Looks to chase him down, and he just throws it. Yeah, this is going to be a... Yeah, it didn't get past the line of scrimmage. Pretty obvious intentional grounding penalty here. The line of scrimmage is at the 35. Let's go back, Andre, and look at that last play. See what happened to 32 in Crimson. Yeah, keep his uh, keep your eyes on 32. Work it out. He recognizes formation in the play, and that's where Wilson just chips him off and stops him from making the tackle on Jefferson, the fullback. But right there, just a nice chip block. It's nothing wrong, nothing illegal about that block. He is up and moving around the side. Going up top to his big play guy. Albert Wilson makes the catch. Wilson, the senior receiver, holds just about every record for Georgia State in short history. Picks up 34 yards. You know, we don't pick these impact players by accident. This guy's a playmaker. And a lot of NFL scouts are looking at him at Jacksonville State, excuse me, at uh, Georgia State. They like his side. They think he can play slot receiver on the next level. He is a good football player. 5'9", 200 pounds, senior. What's that loose for? And off left side, here goes Evans, nowhere to run. Double yards, maybe, when it's all said and done. Nice double move that the play It's thrown a little bit earlier with less air, and he doesn't have to wait on it. It's a foot race between he and Vinny Samsuri. Well, Wilson has scored 19 touchdowns in his career, and the average touchdown covers 46 yards per game. Kelton Hill now in the Wildcat formation, the former quarterback, taking a snap, and he'll hand it off to Travis Evans for a game of yard. I'm going to go back to that. His average touchdown, Albert Wilson, his average touchdown covers 41 yards, or 46 yards. <laughs> That's crazy. He has receptions in his career for 93, 84, 78, 75 yards. And over his career, he's averaged 19.6 per reception. First year in the FBS level, first year in the Sun Belt, and he's already in his preseason, you know, second team preseason all Sun Belt. You know, that's you turn on the film, the guy just flashes. Alabama's done a pretty good job keeping him in check this afternoon. Good motion out the slot. Bell just throws it up for grabs on the sideline. Hoping that Wilson could come up with the play, but Wilson hit the deck. You see the play he tried to make? He wanted to tip the ball back inside. They had two other defenders or teammates there for the interception, and that's what he's talking about. Watch him here, he goes up. He can't, he knows he's not gonna come back in bounds, but he's trying to tip it back inside. So maybe one of his his players, Bradney Slive, Selby, I'm sorry, he, he uh, he's, so he could come up with the interception. So a 53 yard attempt for Will Lux. His longest year is 39, did he get it through? Yes, he did. New career long for Will Lutz, a sophomore at a noon in Georgia. Had no attempts from the in field goals in the first three contests. All of his attempts came last week against Jacksonville State. 
but not till a 53 yarder. Always the official hangout for NCAA football. And by UPA. one specialized yeah. group. You're talking offensive linemen, defensive linemen, wide receivers, Mark Barrett, running backs. Mark Barron actually here today watching the Crimson Tide on homecoming. Sims continues to work at quarterback. That pass is deflected. They'll have their quarterback join that group and A.J. McCarron after this season. How about 63 SEC players drafted last year 35 of the 63 on the defensive side of the ball <laughs> what the conference has somewhat built its reputation on this year however they're changing out maybe all those defensive players could have drafted last year has allowed these offenses to produce some pretty big numbers Here's Sims I tell if he was looking for Harrison Jones or was he trying to hit Kenny Bell in the middle of the ground area Harrison Jones, the tight end. Barrett Jones' younger brother. Most of a player in his own right. His brother, his older brother, played all, of, all up and down that offensive line. Senior year played center. Moved inside from tackle to center. Really helped to solidify that, that offensive line last season. Seems we're throwing on third down. a bit, but held on to by Harrison Jones. That's a gain of 12, and that'll move the chains. Kelly, I like the body language of Blake Sims. He knows the offense. He's confident in his arm strength and where to go with the football. He just delivers it. Once he commits to it, it's, you know, he, he doesn't have a, a string on him where he's pulling it back. He, he delivers the football on time. Transfer from UMass who enrolled at Georgia, Georgia State last year to sit out with the transfer rule. Second leading tackler a year ago. First down and five then for Alabama. Leading the 
in charge right now. The ESPN school rankings are based on verbal commitments. Alabama at the top of the food chain again. Chris Black with his second reception of the year. The redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, gained six. Today's first and ten line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. So first and ten from the 30 now for Alabama. Deacon stays in the game to the left side of Blake Sims, the junior out of Gainesville. There's Chris Black trying to get the corner, and he'll get it down to the 15-yard line. Well, well executed. You want to get it to Black out of space. He didn't get playmakers freed up, but wants to block. A Cooper on the outside come down inside to free up the little bubble screen. The timing by Blake Sims right there. Watch Cooper throw the block. Now you got one-on-one -on -one right there. That's exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Get a playmaker in space with the football. Senior in high school, 42-61, had a game last season where he rushed for 510 yards. 6'3", 238 pounds. And I'm sure at some point before this one's over, we're going to get a chance to see Derrick Henry. But what a talented player. Blake Sims with a gain of six as that one goes to face shot again. Imagine that, 12,000. It was a high school rushing record that stood for 51 years. There's a look at 27. James Numbers this week was wearing number three. A couple of guys actually changed numbers. Since throws. Will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Ten yard throw and catch for the Crimson Tide. And they put 44 on the board. And you can see some special talents in Chris Black as well. Watch him give the out. Ball's thrown out in front of him. He just stops on a dime. And the defender to that side, Harrington Jordan, has no chance to rally up and make that tackle because he stops, puts his foot in the ground, and then heads north to the end zone. Well, the point after, up and good from Adam Griffin as he gives Kate Foster a little break. Sims giving McCarron a little break, and he throws a touchdown pass, 44-3. Okay, for Alabama, they have looked very efficient, 45-3, doing what Coach Saban expected them to do in this situation. Georgia Southern, or excuse me, Georgia State 0-4, looking for their first win as an FBS team coming here to Alabama. Probably not the best place to do that. So Griffith will kick off Kate Foster, getting some rest after Alabama's touchdown. Went 10 plays, 68 yards, 5 minutes off the clock, and the 10-yard touchdown pass from Sims to Black makes it 45-3. Kick will settle in at about the goal line. Wilson flag down the 10 yard line. This may be another block in the back against Georgia State, which they have had problems with field position. Yeah, Leffler, our referee today, with the call. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 31 on the return team, half the distance to the goal. First well, perfect opportunity to bring in a guy that return, but we're actually the number of targeting fouls are down per game. Last year we had one in every eight games. This year it's one in every ten games, even with the additional emphasis. Strong for grabs up around the 34. Who's got it? 
side. I tell you, both the receiver and the corner to that side fighting for the football. Robert Davis is the receiver. I think they're going to award it to, to Robert Davis with a catch of a first down here. Bradley Silk. Bradley Silk with the coverage for Alabama. Take a look at this. And tie goes to the receiver here, Steve. It does. And uh, Bobby Moreau right there making this ball a great position. Looking in. And uh, tough call. <laughs> I'm going to go with Bobby Moreau. There you go. He's staying, I always say that. I'm standing a quarter mile away. He's standing three feet next to it. Go with the guy who's close to it. Georgia State will take it on uh, first down and 10. And that pass a little bit low, and we'll say the catch is made. Back to the targeting rule and, and, and how it's ultimately it'll be a vote by the coaches because right. people always point at the officials, yeah, but, <laughs> but the coaches are the only ones that get a vote in the rules committee. How about maybe the severity of the penalty for the player? Coaches, because right. people always point at the officials, yeah, but, <laughs> but the coaches are the only ones that get a vote in the rules committee. How about maybe the severity of the penalty for the player rather than missing? But I think the impact of the foul today is is pretty. Is pretty. Uh, dramatic for the player, and I think that's what's caught their attention, and that's what's changing player behavior, and we needed that to happen. Yeah, I think uh, somebody watches a lot of football games here in the youth, and the nothing worse than watching a player lay on the field, not move, and you don't know what the situation is, so anything we can do to avoid those particular situations, I think it's better for football in general. Absolutely, and like I said, that's the goal. When, when fans get upset about the rule, Think about right. what the background is. Right. It is player safety, yeah. and it's a good thing. And like I said, we're making progress. The, the fouls are down on that in, in a year where you would have thought with all the emphasis they yeah. would go up. So that means the players are getting it. And uh, and, and I think as, as we continue to learn and grow with it, it'll get better and better. Well, Steve, uh, thanks so much for spending some time with us. I know fans out there would like to hear about how this – is being enforced, how it's kind of evolved in the first month, and uh, I know you got to get back to the control center, back to the SEC offices. We but thanks for joining us. Always great to see you. I miss you. I miss you down there on the field. I miss you in the stripes and stuff. Got to get you back out. Well, you know, I, I miss being out there, but but I really love the job, and, and hopefully we're making a difference and still working. And uh, so you know that's why I'm here today, watching these guys work, and then uh, we'll be in the command center tonight. All right, tell us about. We said hello. I will do it. All right, Steve. Thanks so much, buddy. Thank you. down for the Crimson Tide over the 45, six yard pickup. Now go to Parker Baradu. Talk about a guy that's taking advantage of some playing time, Blake Sims. He looks sharp. Getting the ball out on time. That's what you do as a quarterback. Manage the game. That's not a bad term. We talked to Coach Saban about that. You have to be able to manage the game at all times, know the down and distance, where to go with the football, snap count. There's a pressure coming here, though, and you see the footwork from Sims, and he confirms that pass. But close to a first down. Let's see where they spot. They'll actually spot him right beyond the line. That should be good enough. That goes to Kirk Freitag. It's a nice helmet tap from Ben Dussmeyer, the offensive coordinator. This shows you the athletic ability of Blake Sims. Watch him get outside the pocket. He outruns Tavares Batiste and then throws a nice strike to the outside. And that is, that's doing it at a high level. Sims, by the way, Andre, how about this? He's now 10 out of 12 for 116 and a touchdown. That's following McCarron's 15 out of 16. Amazing stuff. This was to stop the play. Ball start. Offense, number 72, five-yard penalty. First down. It was uh, nice to talk to Steve Shaw for yeah. a few minutes. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think he kept hitting on the fact that, you know, it's he, as much as you might not agree with the call, it's all about player safety. And I think we've seen week one there was some confusion, maybe even a little bit in week two down the road. But I think with each game that's played, I think not only the officials, the players, the fans, all kind of are starting to get a little bit closer to being on the same page in that regard. 
Derrick Henry, the true freshman out of Union, Florida, the young man you were speaking of. He'll pick up 16 yards, brought down by Nate Anthony. 12,124 career high school rushing yards for Derrick Henry. There goes Henry again. He's inside the 20, the young man. Big physical back. I mentioned the fact last year he had a game where he rushed for 510 yards. That might have been more than I threw for my senior year in high school. Swing it out to the far side. Inside the 15 down to the 13 yard line, a gain of three. Ty Reed on that reception. But here's the number that stands out to me about Derrick Henry. He averaged 327 yards a game rushing and almost 10 yards every time he took the football. Three quarters are in the books. Alabama's in control. 45 3, and they're knocking on the door. They just uh, took the ball and marched it at will down the throats of Georgia State. And well, the Panthers looking like uh, might be giving up some more points here as Alabama. It's second down inside 20. What's happening there for Bounty Tenpenny, a true freshman at North Little Rock. Just one talented back after another. And you see all the receivers that are. Chipping in, the Andrew White catching a touchdown pass. Kevin Norwood with a couple of big plays, and Chris Black electrifying this homecoming crowd here in Tuscaloosa. It's a third down. About the 12-yard line. Zips. Especially at that angle, it's hard to hard to handle it. A 30 yard field goal attempt coming up for Adam Griffith. Nate Foster getting a little bit of rest. And the freshman out of Calhoun, Georgia. And he will miss it. No good. Now Georgia State doesn't give up any points on that possession. And they'll have the football when we come back. Tuscaloosa, 13-44 to go in this one. You know, I think LSU is still going to be an unbelievable matchup for this Alabama team, despite their loss last week to Georgia. It's one of the better football games I've seen in a long time. And, and don't sleep on the third team on that. The, right there on that graphic, Texas A&M. Even though they lost to Alabama, they still play LSU, and LSU plays Bama at the end of the season, so it's it's still kind of out there for those three teams. Long way from the finish line. situation you better make sure it's a catch and run and just to give yourself a chance to, to pick up the first down. So 
D. Hart back to return this punt. He stands at the 33-yard line. End over end, wobbly kick that will go out of bounds. Let's see where they end up spotting this at the 43-yard line. Time out on the field. It's all Alabama. We'll come back, look at some of the action coming up at the SEC. position to challenge for the national championship, which is even more amazing. Got Clemson coming up. That should have been picked off. They complete on first down and ten, but, I, you know, first of all, it's a huge day for you. So when I ever asked you about the Heisman in October, you are like, I'm not still talking to me. So the fact that you said that. Play the best football of anybody. You can maybe, <laughs> maybe argue Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. He's what he's done. doing, I mean, is just unbelievable in his first year. The numbers against the team. This was supposed that was supposed right. to be That's what I mean. a heck of a matchup against Maryland and their their defense, but he has just owned the Terps today. Derrick Henry in at running back. There's a game coming up October. He's 19th. owned just about everybody he's played though. But uh, October 19th at Clemson, Florida State. And the Tigers will go at it. Florida State still needs to finish the year. I mean, both, for both those teams that are, you have to say, kind of front runners for the ACC, they, you know, they finish up the regular season, you know, with their rivals. Clemson yeah. going to South Carolina, at South Carolina, against South Carolina, Florida, and Florida State. So even if whoever wins that game uh, in Clemson, not going to be easy to finish out with a win. I mean, look at who they got to play. Boy, they seem to be getting better. The peak point of their season. Really, really bad timing. The other game I want to watch when I get back to Atlanta, you know, my sofa is that Ole Miss Auburn game because if you blink, you might miss a play. Two good friends going at it. Hugh Freeze, Gus Malzahn, those guys that really respected each other, started through the high school ranks, and that relationship has kind of blossomed over the years. Two guys that believe in the same type of offenses. They spent a lot of time in the offseason comparing notes, and today they're matching with There may be 90 plays on each side of the ball today in that contest. I was just thinking after Chris Black caught that ball, what a, what a game like this does it is it creates opportunities for players. And how do you go out? How do you execute? What's the coach want to see? Well, somebody today is going to earn more playing time in a significant role as the tide of goes forward in their schedule. And you look at number five and the way he's operating, once the ball's in his hands, the routes he's running, nice and crispy, how he's getting yards after the catch. He's a guy that's going to, he, he put himself on Nick Saban's radar in this one. Redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. Saw 27 jog off the field. Derrick Henry, he's a, a youngster that a lot of people were waiting to see play at this level. And he's just in a, in a tough spot this year. Obviously a ton of talent, but learning the ropes. And, you know, he didn't play in a system where he had to do a lot of different things. Here's Sims. Some stutter step dancing around. And he'll take it down to the 35-yard line. It was basically toss right, toss left. Yeah. Handed right, handed left for Derrick Henry. The whole process of blocking and route running and checking off. The main thing, protecting the quarterback and pass protections. And those are things that a young back, you know, when you get to this level, you're going to have to do it, especially at a program like Alabama. It's where it's complex, a pro-type system. But uh, he's picking it up. I think once he does, you'll, I don't know if you're going to see 510 yards in a game, but he's going to be a good one. 510 yards in one game. We'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the
to set up a screen. Nice catch by Tim A long way to go, and still well shy, about a dozen yards shy of the first down. That'll bring out the punt team. Well, Alabama, the number one team in the country, catching Georgia State here in their homecoming game. Georgia State looking for their first win of the year. Their first year in the FBS playing in the Sun Belt Conference, and it's been all Alabama, as you might expect. The Crimson Tide have racked up 469 yards of offense to 141 for Georgia State in the first Alabama punt of the afternoon. Coming up, Cody Mandel will step in. Six-yard punt, the Andrew White getting down to cover it for the Crimson Tide. Make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. And by Geico. What's out there? Installs, Horston Baker. You're going to be pretty good with this when you're still here and the statue of the <laughs> I'm just saying. Travis Evans. They have first down. He will give him 11 on that carry. We really enjoyed our visit with him yesterday. You know what I got out of that is that he is such a perfectionist, yeah. but he feels like they're making the steps to get where he wants them well, to be. What I get is that he understands that each and every year, and where a lot of fans may not grasp this, but every team is different. Yeah. The chemistry is different, and especially on the collegiate level when you have guys leave early, seniors graduate, that's another bunch. It's a talented group, but you've got to establish the chemistry within the program again, and he's one of the best in the business at doing it. Well, he has uh, definitely worked hard despite the score. He has a quick coach, and that's for sure. A lot of guys, a lot of young guys getting into this game, and this is a great opportunity to see who can get some snaps down the road. Yeah, young players, and he's coaching them up because he knows they're going to be integral parts of this program going forward. Right there in the, in the ear of Eddie Jackson, the talented corner. Uh, he is just constantly working those guys to get better each and every snap, each and every minute that they put the uniform on. He spent a lot of time with Eddie Jackson because he knows Eddie's going to play a lot of snaps. And he knows he's a talented player. Pass is caught by Albert Wilson, and he turns the corner. And let's see where they run him out of bounds at the 36, and that'll be a first down after a 14-yard pickup. Well, today's first and ten line, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Five twenty to go in this one. Imagine that, though. How hard that is to do. Three national yeah. championships in the last four years, and then a nice run with the SEC and their dominance. On Alpha, twelve men in the huddle. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, the last team to win three consecutive national championships. you got to go back to Minnesota back in 1934, 35, and 36. Alabama searching for their third straight now. 15 total national titles for Alabama, 23 SEC titles. Jonathan John Bart. In and running back alongside our new quarterback, Ben McClain. Ben, nice tight spiral down the near sideline. Ben, and ben McClain and Ronnie Bell were in a heated quarterback competition coming into the season, and the coaches settled on Bell. But McClain certainly 6'1", 210, so he's got a pretty good arm. Yeah, a little higher completion percentage as well as yet this year to throw an interception in his limited time. 6 one 2 10 out of Snellville, Georgia. Brookwood High School product. Yeah, Taylor Brookwood, a powerhouse. Brookwood, I'm sorry, yeah. Powerhouse high school football program. Second down at 15 now. I'll pick up the five 
have they lost for John Marks? Dylan Lee down that tackle. Well, defense for Alabama, they have led the nation in scoring D the last two years. They gave up just eight points a game in 2011, a little under 11 points a game last season. No school has done that three years in a row. Now, Alabama right now giving up 14 and a half points, but they've got Texas A&M out of the way. I think that's where the blemish is. Yeah, when you get in a game like that and you allow 40 plus you know, to win, and that throws the, the stats off just a little bit. Certainly today will help the cause for Alabama. Loss of a yard. Reggie Ragland able to make the tackle. Well, A.J. McCarron didn't quite play two quarters, but the time he was on the field, he certainly exhibited the right stuff today. Because of that, he's our player of the game, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low prices every day. Four touchdown passes today, ties his career high. That is now seven times in his career he has thrown four touchdown passes in a game. What was your high touchdown pass, by the way, in a game? <laughs> I think it was six. You know a little bit about what AJ's had to deal with today. Yeah, he's got a red coach. He went to the second half. Yeah, it drives you crazy, actually. But you're also rooting on the other guys that put in the work and practice. D. Hart makes a nice catch on the sideline. Gets a couple of blocks. And here goes D. Hart. He's got some room and it stumbles over the midfield strike. A 51 yard punt, a 31 yard return for D. Hart. Two and a half to go. Cruz, there's a little more trouble there. It would, would set the alarm or sound the alarm for me a little bit more, but I don't see where they lose uh, going forward. It's one of those where those tiebreakers will start to come into play. If LSU was able to upset Alabama, Alabama, Texas a and Certainly was a tough game with... But I mentioned as well, AM's not out of it. Right. Because, you know, now you've got if AM takes care of business against LSU. So you go deeper into the tiebreaker. You know, you know what'll be interesting to see is, is how LSU does come out and play today. That yeah. was such a deflating loss on the road and a great game. You're just Les Miles has been there before. I don't I don't see them taking a step back, but going to Starkville will not be an easy road at all. Most people will have the bells out, full house. It'll be loud. The only way to silence them, start putting up points early. Yeah. Yeah, That'll be good enough for a first down. Gain of eight. So Alabama will win this one easily, not as easily as some at home would probably like. But nonetheless, it has been complete domination, 45 to three. Alabama is uh, closing in on 500 yards of offense. They have 184 yards on the ground, 296 through the air. I think they had one maybe episode in this game where you could point to where they weren't consistent right at the end of the first half when the twos had come in the game. But aside from that, it's just been a very impressive, thorough performance, and that's even grading the number twos going forward and the threes that uh, got a chance to play as well today for Nick Saban. A lot of guys got in, got some, got some work. The quarterback play, pretty impressive today for Nick Saban. Sims and McCarron go 29-34, 296, five touchdowns, no interceptions out of the quarterback position today. And Alabama goes to 5-0 and on the year, did nothing to certainly hurt their chances at remaining number one in the country. Now they can focus on their next opponent, Kentucky. Kara has caught up with Coach David. Coach, you felt like Alabama made some improvements in consistency against Ole Miss. You wanted to see that carry through today. How did they do? Well, I thought they did great the first half. We got to play a lot of players in the second half. They did some good things, and there's some things they don't learn from. So it was a good experience for us. You know, we haven't had a game where we've been able to play those guys. So I was really proud of the way our guys competed in the game today. As you mentioned, a lot of different players saw the field today. Who stood out to you? I thought Blake Sims did a really good job of playing quarterback. You know, we wanted to play quarterback in all our system. He can run all the quarterback runs, and we want to 
obviously and throw the ball, which is improved on. And, you know, Chris Black did a nice job, and you know, some of the defensive players did well, but we gave up some plays too. When you have different personnel in place, what challenges does that present for you? Do they know what to do? Are they going to line up right? Are they going to get, you know, execute what we do? But that, that experience is what helps them learn. So it was a very good learning experience for them today. Thanks, Coach. Dave, listen to back to you. All right, Karen, thank you very much. And Andre talked about Chris Black today as a guy that probably bought himself some extra snaps. And Coach just highlighted him right there. Yeah, young player who performed when they got the football to him. He did some special things. I think he ran some good crisp routes that you're looking for for an offense, you know, a player in his position. So I think he definitely served himself well in this one. Alabama wins it 45-3 to over Georgia State. Time for us to go to the studios. Check in with Dari and company. It's all yours. All right, guys, we will send it back to Tuscaloosa in just a bit. An easy victory for Alabama. Georgia State falls to 0-5. It's one of those things. You heard Kara talking to Coach Saban. How much does a coach actually take away from a game like this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what, what do you think that they saw that... What did you see from Alabama that you said, oh, okay, all right, good. I really didn't see anything out of the ordinary. I just saw Alabama being Alabama, playing good defense, playing structured. It didn't matter who came into the game, whether it was first, second, thirds, fourth, walk-ons. They're just taught well. A.J. McCarron, school record, completion percentage, went 15 of 16 in the day. Four touchdowns and no turnovers. That's a ball. Look at that catch. How about that great catch to Andrew White there? So he played, and then Blake Sims came in. He went 14 of 18. And again, if this is one of those games. You see this every year. The SEC has a week where they all kind of beat up on a much inferior opponent. And you say at the end of it, what do you take away? And realistically, I don't know what that answer is. You don't really take anything away. These are just tune-up games. I mean, between last weekend and next weekend, the two SEC games, Ole Miss, Kentucky, this is just a game for them to sharpen their skills and get some, some younger players some playing time. A.J. McCarron had the second half off, and then after the game, spoke with Kara Capuano. AJ, under your leadership, Alabama's offense today was really clicking. What was going well specifically? Uh, communication. You know, uh, when we struggled on offense, it's been communication up front uh, to the rest of the guys. So uh, that was probably the biggest thing. You know, their defense uh, threw a lot of weird things at us. Uh, I mean, they line up everywhere and kind of move. We did a great job of communicating and uh, everybody executed. Still maybe not the caliber defense that you're used to seeing in the SEC. So when you have an opponent like this, how do you gauge the progress of the offense? Moving the ball. Uh, I mean, not hurting ourselves. And we did a, you know, a really good job of that in the first half. Uh, didn't hurt ourselves too much and, and progressively got better um, as the game went on. Coach Saban told us he really wanted to see more consistency from Alabama. They started it last week ago against Ole Miss. How'd you all do today? Felt good. Uh, you know, it was a good win for us. Um, you know, it's not about who we play, it's how we play. So uh, we've been preaching that a bunch, and uh, it felt like the guys came out and did their job today. Thanks, AJ. Yes, ma'am. SEC games as we move along in the day include Georgia at Tennessee. That game gets going about 10 minutes from now. Ole Miss on the road as well. Florida at home against Arkansas. LSU goes to Starkville. Uh, South Carolina at home. Missouri at Vanderbilt. A battle of James Franklin's there. Quarterback versus head coach. Paul Feinbaum's take now on this game and what it means for Ole Miss at all. And this Ole Miss game is really critical because Ole Miss uh, was a major disappointment last week in Tuscaloosa. So much was expected. Uh, all the national media said it could be a close game. They go to the fourth quarter. Even my, my buddy Desmond Howard boldly predicted Ole Miss will win the game. And they played so poorly and were shut down and, and left so many points at the goal line. But I think Hugh Freeze has a lot to overcome tonight and a lot to accomplish. Meanwhile, Auburn has had a nice season. Uh, they've stolen a game or two. They're, they're having a nice run. They were exposed a little bit. At LSU and with a home crowd, it's one of the best home crowds in college football at Jordan Hare Stadium. I think they'll make this interesting, but in the end, I think Ole Miss wins this game. They're looking ahead to AM next week and they want a big push uh, at the Grove when Johnny Manziel shows up. Well, they're going to need a big game and probably plenty of offense from Bo Wallace here. What do you expect to see? I expect to see high flying offense. Bo Wallace leads this spread concept, chill plague, explosive. 
option-based offense, and Hugh Freeze is, is, is good friends with Gus Malzahn, so they're, they're very similar in their offensive approach. A lot of the chunk plays that fuel both these offenses. Yeah, these were the last two head coaches at Arkansas State. And you look at Auburn, not that dissimilar, right? I mean, no. These two offenses are somewhat similar. Same offensive system, but more than anything, you know, you have to see which team is going to play defense. That's really the key tonight coming into this game is which team is going to show up and stop the other explosive offense from scoring. But more than anything, this is a notch-up game, Dari. This is one of those matchups that everyone's playing to see who's going to take that fourth spot in the SEC West. I know you're talking like fourth spot in the SEC West. That would be West. the exact middle <laughs> spot in the division. But not a bad place to be when you're considering the nation's best football conference and you're considering that the first three spots are taken already by Texas A&M, Alabama, and LSU. You said there's no wiggle room there in the top. No wiggle room. There. Really? Very, very, very right. little in there. We'll see right. at the end of the no, season. You're probably right. I'm trying to figure out where you have wiggle room, and if it's not Ole Miss, you're probably right. Okay. All right, let's go Florida. They're at home tonight uh, against Arkansas. Arkansas is going to try to run the ball. You've got to figure, but that's difficult to do against Florida. Florida offensively still trying to figure things out with Tyler Murphy getting ready to make his second start. Well, the good thing about Florida right now is they're not hurting themselves by having, having Tyler Murphy in the ball game. So that's a pretty good job coming in for Jeff Driscoll, injured out for the season, but he's picked up where Jeff Driscoll was left off. He's still running the same plays, but he has the arm strength to make all the throws within the offense, and he is a spread concept running quarterback by trade. So Tyler Murphy's done a good job so far, but we just don't know where Florida stacks up to last Now, taking care of things at home is just a tap away. Introducing AT&T Digital Life. Personalized home security and automation that lets you be closer to home. So cool. Get $100 in instant savings when you order Digital Life Smart Security. Limited availability in select markets. Are you settling for the same old, same old? Or are you making it the original with Pizza Hut's $10 ready pizza deal? Any pizza, any size, any toppings. Delivery, dine-in, or carry-out. Just ask for or use promo code 10 n We all have a choice. Make it great. Retirement solutions from New York Life can help you keep good going. This is ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. ESPN College Football on ABC. The toe tap a moment ago by Charlie Moore. His first catch of the day makes for our seventh lead change of the day between Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Okay. Great job by Moore over there. And now you start to wonder, is it the last team with the football that matters today? Morgan Burns from the five gets out to the 21. Let's go back to Chris Cotter. Indiana State Sunfeld looked like an AT&T All-American today. 321 yards and two touchdowns. The Hoosiers beat the Nittany Lions for the first time ever. 44 to 24. Get involved. Text your vote for the AT&T All-American of the Week to 34763, Bob. There's an eye from the Big Ten. I think Kirk Herbstreit called it. I think yeah, he had that one. On game day earlier today, he thought Indiana was going to have a chance to go happy fast. Indiana had to stay down by a point, plenty of time on the clock. And no pressure on Sam's. He just threw it into coverage and threw it short. That looks like Calvin Barnett is the injured player for Oklahoma State. The big defensive tackle from Tulsa injured on the return. So the crowd quiet for a moment. Oh! <clears throat> 
Little help here? Geico. 15 minutes could save you. Well, you know. Anybody? You'll probably never bat in the ninth inning of Game 7. Or have to make a shot with 20,000 fans screaming at you. Or choreograph an original touchdown dance. And they come out and pound and run the run down the clock and try to move into field goal position. They had a tendency to go fast. How they match up to the current teams that are in the SEC on the rest of the schedule. Uh, it was a, a short game today in Tuscaloosa. Less than three hours of playing time. Alabama, a 45-3 win uh, over Georgia State. Andre Ware, of course, was on the call day with Dave Neal. Andre, now, what, uh, what was the difference in this one? The difference in this one, just too much class by Alabama. A.J. McCarron made a quick day's work, 15 of 16 for 166 yards and four touchdowns. That was all in the first half of this one. A lot of running backs played in this one. A lot of young players got an opportunity to play as Alabama moves to 5-0. and They'll get back in conference play next week at Kentucky against the Wildcats, trying to move on to a, closer to a national championship run. All right, Andre, thank you. Elsewhere, there's a show being put on. In fact, the show is now over. Curtain is closed. Bow, Jameis Winston. You deserve it. Break 24 right now. Uh, it is a little awkward being on the market again. Play clock, it's down to 10. That's smart. Second down and five, they keep up with Brown with Jeremy Smith. And Smith moves the pile within about two yards of the first down, and that will keep the clock rolling as we will go inside of... Bob Stoops, just four wins behind Barry Switzer for the all-time lead in Oklahoma history. Today, he hunts his 154th W as Sooners head coach earlier in the day. Coach joined the Ford Fox Saturday pregame show. Blake Bell has come in and really solidified you guys offensively. A lot of people thought he was going to be the starter coming into the season, but he takes the reins now a few games in. How impressed have you been with how Blake has really taken command of your offense? Um, I'm really excited about the way Blake's playing. He has, he has played sensational in, in two games. Fine Chinese restaurant. That's awesome. I know. Voice activated and great gas mileage. So much better than choosing voice activated or great gas mileage. Be like eating sweet or sour chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 What is this? Sour chicken. That's good, right? That'd be awful. Oh. I think I like and better. <laughs> and is better. The 2014 Focus. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. Go further. Retirement solutions from New York Life can help you keep great defensive tackles, and those guys. They have always been men up there. You've always had great defensive tackles like Tommy Harris. So that's what they were in a year ago. Now, what that did against the spread offense is force the second level to play in man coverage to spread out with these new evolving spread offenses. Welcome back to Stillwater. Are the fans of the Cowboys trying to urge their team to a back-and-forth victory? We have had seven lead changes between Kansas State and Oklahoma State. Bob Wischusen here with Rod Gilmore and Quinn Kisnick. It's been a terrific back-and-forth affair. And Oklahoma State has used the turnover battle to win in the past. 40-5 and five under Mike Gundy when they're plus in turnovers and they're plus today. If you're Kansas State defensively, what do you expect, Bob? You're expecting, I would think, a run to the left yep. to try and center up the field goal kicker if you don't get the first down. Let's see where it goes. And instead, heading to the right is Walsh. And he has stood up, and now, two timeouts remaining, Bill Snyder spins one. Dante Barnett didn't get fooled. He stayed home on the backside and was 
there to bring down J.W. Walsh. Well, and this makes things tougher. He's got to come out and head this way. Watch all the pressure that comes out anticipating this. We assume they would try and make sure they got back to the middle of the field in case they didn't pick up the first down to have an easier field goal. Now this is a more difficult one from the far hash. Well, on that replay, you could see the entire defensive front for Kansas State slid yep. to the right, yep. thinking that was where the running play might go. But a good job by Barnett to hold the edge on the backside. Ah, that's just what they're expecting us to do. So we'll do what they don't expect us to do. So now Grogan, and we saw earlier, Mike Gundy tried to take an intentional delay of game penalty in this type of a situation to back Grogan up to give him a better angle. Now it looks like from 28 yards, they're set to kick it away. And a kick six earlier for K-State. So now Kansas State, with still a lot of time left, has to have a touchdown. As we take a look at today's good hands play, brought to you by Ball State, and a trick play from Oklahoma State back in the first half. Trickeration. Walsh. Smith. Getting it out to Seals. Seals comes up with a good catch when the ball was underthrown, and that set up an Oklahoma State touchdown. That was... Indiana with their first win over Penn State in school history. Teddy Bridgewater in Philly to take on Temple, and Teddy would get things rolling early, rolling right. Gerald Christian, Bridgewater, Temple Border. So, wait, do you, you prep with Simon Garfunkel as well? <laughs> Later in the first, Bridgewater lobs it up. Devontae Parker brings it in and then comes down hard on that shoulder. This could be a big injury going forward. Yeah, because he's one of those athletic guys on the outside. He doesn't get a lot of national cover. He's a guy that Teddy Bridgewater relies on down the field. But didn't matter on this day. Bridgewater, another sensational performance. Louisville cruises 30-7. 348 yards, two touchdowns for Teddy. Nothing but conference games left for the man on the right. Gary Patterson and TCU, the Horn Frogs, they rallied to roll SMU last weekend. What can they do in Norman today? A murder horror story coming premieres Wednesday only on FX. Fifty years, Amco's been known as the transmission expert. My car goes. Band adjustment, simple fix. Car's giving me a. Uh, car's giving me a. Over the years, a lot has changed. Field. They were still jockeying people out. I think Leonard Floyd did not get out there. And you can see Mark Rick at the top of the heat calls timeout clearly before the snap. No doubt about it. Well, it has been a miserable half a decade if you're a volunteer fan. And Mark Richt is uh, arguing with Tom Ritter. Well, he's also saying, was the spot reviewable? Because I think it was farther back, is what Mark Rick is saying. Was that spot reviewed? Catches it. See, the ball, I thought, was about a half a yard short the whole time. And Mark is saying, you know, inches are important here. Now, again, I don't know if there's enough conclusive evidence from 100 yards away to change the call, but Mark wanted to take a timeout and just at least examine it. Three in a row to Georgia. 18 in a row to ranked teams. Fourth and... I bet you Floyd is going to come up here for the back this time. No matter what.
23. At 169, a career high last week against South Alabama. Kiss is fired up. Don't miss the keys to the game. Watch live tailgate Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Team Oklahoma geared up for what they hope will be a breakout game offensively. Bob Stoops alluded to it earlier this week saying, we got to start clicking. we got to start putting up some big points. Well, today, be that day. Fox Sports has brought you an interactive fan experience to campuses throughout the season. Make sure to join us each week at a different stop with the Fox College Saturday Tour presented and driven by Ford F-150 built for itself. Tour is on the road next week in Manhattan, Kansas for Baylor and Kansas State, and congrats to Ford. The Ford F-Series truck has been the best-selling truck in the U.S. for 36 consecutive years.